Welcome back. This is part four of chapter five lectures on looping. We're continuing with the while loop. In this session, we're going to talk about repetition patterns. All right. The first repetition pattern that's typical of programs is called the read, check, and use pattern. And the goal of such a pattern programs that follow this pattern tend to be to read and process input until there is no more input. One way to solve this problem is to design the input in such a way that the list of input values is followed by a special value called a sentinel that really represents the end of data. Here's an example. Suppose I want to just read and display input values. The input will be f designed such that the input values are terminated by the value negative 999. As an example, here is the input stream 999, negative 999, is not really treated as an input, is there as a marker to say end of inputs. And we expect the outputs to be the values leading up to, but not including, the minus 999. Well, what's the algorithm? The algorithm is really read a number. If the number is not the sentinel, process the number. Read a number. If the number is not the sentinel, process the number, and so on. Right? If we implement this as a while loop, then... We read a number, let's read. We, the while loop contains a test, and what are we doing? We're checking to see if this is input data. Uh, if the number is not minus 999, it is treated as an input value, in which case we do what? We use the value, in this case we're outputting values, then we must repeat the pattern. Read takes us back to the while, at the while we check, if the value is an input value, we will use it, we will read, we will check, we will use. So the pattern is read, check, use, read, check, use, read, check, use. And finally, the last part of this um, pattern will be a read and a check. The check will fail, then we will go to the, there is no use, we will just resume the rest of the program. Let's uh, take a look at a program that implements um, this, this here. So here's the program. Um, <clears throat> we'll just run, run it. And it's needing inputs. I will say 3, 4, 8, 7, minus 9, minus 99, minus 999, 4. And notice that uh, all the inputs prior to minus 999 are treated as inputs, and we stop when minus 99 is encountered. There are other situations where the data that we want to read is stored in a file, not in a keyboard. And in this case, we want to read and process input data from the input file until there's no more data. And in this case, you um, do, do not necessarily have to have a sentinel. Instead, <clears throat> we have this algorithm. We read a number. If the read was successful, we will process the number. We will read a number. If the read was successful, we will process the number, and so on. And in this case, we're using an input file stream, so we must set that up. Oops. Okay. And we're saying this is read. And remember we said that when, when use where condition goes, the expression stream extract a value does two things. It attempts to read a value, and it tells you true or false. 
whether you were able to read. So this line actually does the reading and the checking all at one time. If, it's, if the read is successful, we will use the value. What do we do next? We go back to the while. Read and check. Read and check. All right. And <clears throat> let's um, pull up the program that does that. Um, So this is the code that does that. And it does some magic up here. And all this is doing is making sure there's a file that I can read from. And now we are going to run this. And when we run it, it's telling us that the input file that we are using in data has these values in it. What was our goal? Our goal was to read the file and print out all the values. So this shows that, in fact, I can read from a file. If I'm successful on the read, I will display it. If I'm successful, I will display. If I'm successful, I will display. One final approach that is often used with a file is to check for the end of file. Just like there is a a, a um, stream function called fail that we use when we try to open a file. There's many such functions. One is called EOF. So we can say stream.eof, which means end of file. This function returns a true if the end of file has been reached when we attempt to do a read. So we can, we can do the same pattern as we had before. But what are we looking for? Read, check, use. So the read is a separate thing. And here we're checking not to see that the read was successful, but checking to see if we've reached the end of the file. If not, we're checking that we have not reached the end of the file, not reach the end of the file. We will use the value, read again, and go back and check. And quickly, we're going to do the same here. There's, um, Here's what the program looks like. And now we are going to run it. And this is the file. My data has these five values in it. We're reading these values. After we read the value seven, we reach the end of the file and we terminate. All right. Now, that's one pattern, read, check, use. There's also another pattern that's very popular, and this pattern says check, read, and then use. And this is what I call a result-driven pattern because stopping depends not upon what values you read as inputs, but what values are being calculated by your program. For example, we have the problem of inputting input values until the sum exceeds some limit. Okay. So the input is just a list of values, no sentiment. So here's a sample. If I set the limit to 17 and the inputs, if this is the set of inputs, what's the goal? Read and add uh, until the sum exceeds limit. First sum is 5, then 8. Then 15, 15 does not exceed the limit. Then 19, that exceeds the limit. So we stop. So basically we only need four of the input values to reach the goal. What's the process? Again, we're calculating a sum. So we set the sum to zero. And if the sum zero is less than or equal to the limit, um, that is, it has not exceeded the limit, we will process. Process means we will read. We will read a value. We will process that value and repeat this process. If the sum is still less than the limit, we will read another number, process that number, and so on. All right. This can be written as a while statement, as a while loop. Uh, and we're assuming that we have a limit here. We could read in a limit. And we check. We read, we use. All right. So let's quickly run that. Um, so 
here's the program we will run it and we're going to set notice that we have a limit of 17 here so I'm just going to add some inputs 1 2 5 8 7 14 9 all right so what do you expect to happen 3 8 16 23 we're going to stop at the sum 23 is what we expect and that's what we have okay with that we're going to stop uh, just notice that for different programming assignments you must find the pattern that matches what you're trying to do and we have shown you how to formulate loops that match these patterns with that we will stop